No, look at that. Uh huh. Look at that. Uh huh. He's ready. Mm -hmm. The guy who All gave right. up the most home runs this year in Major League Baseball, Lance Lynn. There he is. You, you got to be known for something, you know. Some people are doing uh, radio <laughs> shows and not playing. Some people are still getting it done. I know you're not a big, <laughs> hey, 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 hey. I know you're not a big Hey, don't talk about Frazier like but... that. <laughs> oh, easy now, easy. Lance, did did you happen to get word of of your wife's uh, what was it on on Instagram? Her her little Instagram story the other day, showing off a really cool pitching tunnel, but you know, adding a little bit of shade. Yeah, uh, that's the relationship we have. Uh, we walked into it. You know, we sent the kids over to the grandparents. We're finishing up. Uh, finished up building the house right now. So I walked in there. Uh, we were, uh, you know, having a couple high noons and I dropped a uh, man. If I leave the league and home runs giving up this year, having this uh, downstairs, uh, it, it might be time to shut it down. And then uh, we had a little talk and she's like, I got to send something out. I was like, yeah, let's, let's do it. So she, she tried to make it as PG as we could from, you know, what was really said. <laughs> <laughs> can you give us more on what that is though it, do you know anyone else that has that kind of setup in their home and what inspired that you basically have like a, a strip right that you can use indoors to be able to pitch and that and i mean obviously we're not giving away your address but we were debating the other day you're in the midwest so it's cold as hell so you can do that in the winter time yeah i think the, the grand scheme what the idea was having something in-house um where you can you know knock everything you you want out um, not have to worry about anything or, you know, have to rely on somebody else. So, uh, you know, it's been a long time in the making and we're in a good spot, but I also have four kids and, you know, whenever I'm done, it's going to turn into a uh, nice little play play zone for them too. So um, it's going to be multi-use for sure. So uh, the idea was to, you know, have somewhere where I can do what I want, not have to worry about anybody uh, and, you know, have something that the kids can have fun to play in too. Hey, let me ask you this. Halloween was just yesterday. We're looking at the photo here of you and the family. Um, talk to us about the inspiration here. Tell us who everybody is, man. I, I, I think this is, was a really, really good, I mean, really good costumes here. Good selection by you. Yeah, so Lively's in the Batgirl outfit. We got Judge. Uh, I forget what the little kid's name as the Adam family. That's my the youngest. He's the boy. Rumors over here. Uh, she's technically a cat, but she's just an all black. Uh, my wife, Diamond's cousin, it, uh, you know, grandma on the end there, grandpa, great or great grandma and great grandpa on both ends there. Um, and then grandma and grandpa in the middle there. So my wife, uh, likes, likes Halloween. It might be her favorite, uh, favorite time of year. So we, uh, right. we're starting to the, the family, the family uh, Halloween costumes for everybody uh, here moving out, and this was the first go at it, and uh, that's what we went with. Nailed it. Solid. Very impressive. <laughs> so I'm curious because I've complained about this, and we were just talking about the World Series, and you know ratings are, are not um, – they're, they're an all-time low, but we described a number of reasons why that could be the case. Did you watch? Because, I mean, you're taking the kids around for Halloween. I just feel like the way that it overlaps with the holiday, too, takes away from some of the younger crowd. But curious your take on on how we can get some more people watching the uh, the biggest games of the year in our sport. I think, uh, unfortunately, why you, obviously why ratings are down, I think, is you look at the, uh, the two markets. And that's what you know about baseball. It depends on the markets that are in it. Obviously, if there's a bigger market in it, you're going to have more uh, – you know, more people watching in those markets. So it's a great story of the two teams that are in it. You look at the team, you know, payroll wise, it's pretty low. And then a two team that went out and bought uh, everybody they possibly could because they're, they want to win too. So two different ways to go about it, uh, two different style of games all the way around. So uh, for the pure baseball fan, you love it. Uh, you know, you, you kind of, you, you understand what each team did to get there and how they've accomplished it. But as a team that are a, person that's not big into baseball year round they're not going to probably watch that those two teams because they don't really know a whole lot about either team um but you know i watch it you, you watch as much as you can obviously you know the games are at night so you got bedtime with kids and stuff like that and or halloween and trick-or-treating so you know we we're able to go back and watch after after trick-or-treating and, and you saw you know the you know what the rangers did early on to kind of put that game out of contention pretty quick but it's been fun to, you know, watch some of those guys. I know you know, when you know some of the guys and all that, you, uh, you know, it's enjoyable uh, as a, as a baseball player and a baseball fan, but the, you know, the kind of the, the fair weather fan is going to be, uh, this is a tough world series probably because of the markets would be my guess. Is it enjoyable for you? 
can you watch it? When I was playing, I would watch it because I, I love watching baseball. I can sit down and watch a game anytime, even when I was playing. But I'd watch the World Series and I'd be like, man, that was cool, but I hope they don't win. And then the next team does something like, ah, that, 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 was, that was pretty awesome. I hope they don't win either. Yeah, I think you're looking at it as a – that's the thing that drives you when the offseason hits, right? There's people still playing and you're not. So the moment that you watch it and you're like, man, it pisses you off that you're not there is the moment you know you're done. So for me, uh, I know that I'm not done because I'm watching other people still play and I'm not. Um, so it's uh, it gives you that drive. It gives you that uh, thing that you need to kick it into gear to make sure that uh, – you're ready to go um, come spring training, uh, knowing that you weren't the last team on the field and you weren't hosting, you know, hoisting the trophy. So, um, you know, it's kind of bittersweet. You're like, man, that's awesome. Uh, especially having the opportunity to play in a couple of world series. You're like, man, that's awesome for, you know, some friends and former teammates, but it's also pisses you off that you're not there. Very true. Very true. We're talking about Corey Seager a little bit ago. I'd like to hear your, uh, answer this like he's, he's dominating he's going out there uh why are they pitching this guy what, i mean what would be the game plan for you going into these next games facing him yeah you when you obviously in the every world series there's a guy that gets hot and carries a team um like i remember uh when big poppy did it against uh us cardinals back back in what 13 you're like man don't pitch to him it's uh it's one of those things where you, you don't want one guy to beat you, and he's obviously doing his thing right now. So I think that you're looking at a, a point going into the rest of the series where I'm sure uh, uh, the pitching coach, I know Strom very well, he's going to figure out a plan to make sure he's not the one hurting you. But then you look at, you got the Simeons of the world and stuff like that. There's a lot of, a lot of depth there and a lot of guys that can hurt you. But um, obviously pick out one guy and make sure he's not the guy that hurt you. And that's going to be most likely their plan moving forward. And, when a guy's like that, there is no holes uh, to, to, to do anything. You just got to make sure you don't let anyone on in front of him so you can just put him on first and it doesn't load the bases. Lance, when you you're mentioned, you know, you're not done because of uh, you're watching the World Series and you're mad. The, the beard with all the gray, though, starting to worry about you a little bit there, old timer. Uh, yeah, your contract I just have the all next... my hair, so that's good. So, I got plenty here. Talking to the wrong guy on that one. <laughs> hey, what well, your contract is option for 24, mm -hmm. correct? Club yep. option only? Yep. Is that Have the Dodgers given you any indication? I know it's seven days right after the World Series ends, so have they given you any indication on what they're going to do? Uh, no, there's not been an idea of, of how this is going to go down. Um, you know, they are obviously going through everything that they need to go through um, in the offseason, the way they want to set up the – uh, team for next year uh, there's been a little communication um, that uh, you know that there's still some some thoughts of you know hopefully that I can be around but they have to do their job they're still finishing up you know what they want it to look like and obviously how they want it to look like payroll wise and stuff like that so it's a wait and see you know how those things go um, I enjoyed my time in LA um, you know I learned a, a lot um, you know you had a lot of fun a lot of a lot of good teammates there so you know hopefully I get the opportunity to be back and that's, uh, that's the hope right now. And if they don't pick up the option, then you pivot and, you know, see what's available out there on the market. And that's all you can do, especially, uh, you know, in this game, everybody knows it's a business. So you just got to kind of roll with it and see how it goes. So two questions off of that. One, do you know what the deadline is? Is there a day that they have to let you know if it gets picked up? We'll start there and then I'll ask you the other one. I think it's what's it is it five to seven days after the World Series where they can I think, have those negotiations something. I thought it was five. is it five or seven? It used to be seven. Yeah. But I don't know if it's five now. Yes. So you know, I'm sure that within the next week I'll get a uh, a confirmed uh, yes or no what that would look like, um, and then you go from there. So uh, I know that the the deadline for sure is five. I think five days. So five days after the World Series is over, they say yes or no. Um, I'm. I'm positive that they'll we'll have conversations before that um, within the next week or so. Obviously, well, we only have about maybe two weeks top. So, uh, you know, it's part of the game. You know, you know that when you sign things, and and you know it's a business, and you know you hope to be back, but you also know that you know there's there's other opportunities out there, um, and you just got to make the best of whatever happens. And then I feel like we've talked about this at one point for a second during the regular season, but maybe the answer is different in the off season. And maybe we haven't talked about it. I don't know. 
Do you have an age in mind for how long, if you could draw it up, you'd want to pitch until? Uh, you, obviously, you want to play for as long as you can. I think everybody that has played on this panel will tell you, when, even when you're done, you still think you can get it done or you still miss it. So I'm not going to leave anything on the table. Uh, I think it's one of those things year by year. See how you feel. Uh, see the desire. Uh, you know, obviously talk with your, your family. Make sure your wife and kids are okay with you still doing it, which mine are. So as of right now, it's all hands on deck to make sure next year is, is a great year. And then you, you know, you redo it afterwards. But I think we all in our minds have an, an age and the age was 40. And then after that, it's like, okay, you know, after, how do you feel after each year? Physically feel good. Um, didn't have, uh, you know, the, all the success I would have liked, but physically I feel in a good spot. Arm feels good. Body feels good. So, you know, now working on some things that uh, are going to make uh, those things even, even feel better. And then, you know, figure out how to, uh, you know, keep the ball in the ballpark as AJ really wanted to point out from the get go today. <laughs> yeah. He's so sweet. Such a nice hey, It guy. wasn't me. It was diamond. It wasn't me. It was diamond. She brought it up. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, you know, so everybody wanted to, you know, if we'd have posted that, Hey, we got a pitching tone. be like, Oh man, maybe that'll help him keep the ball in the ballpark. So we just beat everybody to the punch. <laughs> True. True. Smart. I like that. All right. So let, let's do some reflecting on the season for you. For, first, from a team perspective, okay? You're on a White Sox team that was definitely going through it. I, I don't think they were supposed to be like the world's greatest ball club, but they certainly underperformed. Then you move, or to, move over to L.A. You join a team that's consistently dominant, especially in the regular season, make it to the playoffs. A, a disappointing end to the season for the ball club, but also going down to at least you can say, I mean, not that it means much, the team that makes it to the World Series. So now that you've had a few weeks to be able to absorb everything, how do you evaluate like your season from first off a non-individual from a team perspective? I um, mean, you're looking at all, you know, all in all, it's kind of a weird year. Uh, you're on a White Sox team that's supposed to compete in the Central. Um, and then from the get go, uh, it didn't work out. Um, there's no other way to say it. Things did not did not click. And did not have the success that uh, we all hoped um, down to a man. So, and then you get traded to the Dodgers, your own team that wins 100 games. You're feeling good about yourself. Um, and then you go into the playoffs and you don't do what you needed to do. Uh, you know, you lost you lost to the wild card team and the last team in. Obviously, they're hot and they've gotten themselves all the way to the World Series. Um, and that's part of the game. So, there's some uh, things that you can take away from it, a lot of positives, but there's also negatives, and uh, that's how you learn. Um, you keep playing this game by taking the positives and, and running with them and making sure that they stay positive and making sure negatives uh, don't creep up. So all in all, it was a, it was a weird year uh, from the get-go, um, but you know, I was able to you know, do some things productively that I liked, and then there were some things that I need to, I need to sure up for myself, and then hopefully that – you know, will help it help whatever team I'm on next year uh, with the ultimate goals win a World Series. So uh, I can't even explain this year. It was a weird year, man. Uh, individually, uh, team wise, uh, you know, there's a lot of weird success and there's a lot of weird failure that you didn't enjoy. So that's but that's baseball. When you think you got it all figured out, baseball slaps you in the face. All right. So you throw your rookie year, you throw 10, you throw 10, 11 innings in the postseason. You think you'd be 36 years old and still only that one World Series after that happened in 2011? One World Series ring? Uh, to be honest with you, if you go talk to everybody around the game, you'd be, they'd all tell you, hey, that might be the only one. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but as a, as a rookie, you're like, heck, I remember my first, well, my first three years, first four years, it was at least NLCS um in two world series so it was nlcs or nothing so um i'd love to go back and tell myself hey you you might not be you, you know you're probably not gonna be back here again after your first four years but to have those first four years i'm very grateful um because of you know the things that you go through now so you learn to cherish those things a little bit more because when you're young you don't you're just kind of going um you're playing the game you're having fun uh you're trying to just you don't really uh, think about the, those things like that because you you feel like you got a lot of years ahead of you. When you get older, you're like, "Damn, I should have I should have really cherished those more because I want to be back so I can I can have another run at it." And uh, you know, haven't been able to do that again, but you know, there's still some time. So you got to join a team midseason in the Dodgers, like I mentioned, that are pretty much always good. They've dominated in the NL West for a while. 
Did you get a sense after that Diamondback series that there's just extra kind of like hurt and pain because they get there so often? Now, they won. I mean, they won in 2020. I mean, shortened season, some people are like, oh, that's different. I mean, it was, just, it was still a playoff format and all of that. But regardless of that, I think – you know, the franchise is trying to avoid being labeled as like the 90s Braves where they consistently win like that. And then, you know, they're not putting together World Series titles. So did you observe anything there, especially like, you know, you get into the clubhouse after the season just abruptly ends like that and uh, and talk to some of the guys? Yeah, I think for me, playing against them uh, over the years and also seeing how like the, the breakdown is this year's team was kind of a little different vibe wise and stuff than the than i think the years past with a, a little bit of a turnover on the roster with the bellingers the turners and guys leaving i think all in all the feeling was this was the first year that the freddie freemans and the mookie bets like are it's it's their team so obviously there's disappointing uh disappointment when you when you lose 100 games but i think it's like hey we we, we won 100 games we didn't do what we needed to do in the playoffs but i don't think it's like a carryover of the years past, I think it's like, Hey, you know, we, this is our a little different vibe. You know, doc talked about it throughout the year was like, Hey, this team's got a little different vibe. I think there's different things that are, are going on with the way that, you know, clubhouse shakes up and stuff like that. And there's kind of a little, a little new feel there. Um, hopefully that's something that, uh, you know, can take off. And then, uh, you know, you're looking at, you know, multiple deep playoff runs. Um, but I think when you get turnover in the game, it doesn't feel like, oh, here we go again, and this is who we are. Um, I think that's the the main thing. There's so there's there's some good there's good vibes there, um, and a, a very very close knit group. So it wasn't uh, it wasn't that feeling like, oh, this group doesn't get it done. It was like this is the first time this group was together feeling. All right, so we're gonna have a little fun here with you. Uh, I brought up Halloween before. Now I want you simply to rate our costumes. Um, on the show right now, I was the only one on the show that wore costumes so far. So this was, this is me as Travis Kelsey and my wife um, as uh, Taylor Swift, and then you got simply AJ, it's Michael Jackson, and then I did two. I was Ronald McDonald, so the whole family was in there with me. <laughs> that one's <Right>. ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't that Ronald McDonald one. That that's that's <laughs> that's pretty good. Who in the world do you know that's gonna let you behind the counter? Uh, I know the McDonald's. owner at that McDonald's. I know the owner, man. It was funny. Did you nail it? Uh, Did you get people what they wanted? Oh yeah, no, I I was giving out food and everything. And you got Kipnis is trite in there, a little mermaid action. Okay. okay. Um, so uh, who that, won? You know, that Ronald McDonald. The fact that you're able to get behind a a uh, yeah. Is, yeah machine. Uh, that's 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 special. You were able to bring it all together. <laughs> You yeah, know? they served. They gave us food afterwards too. It was great. Only, I, I heard they closed you, that. Only one. you and Jersey can be able to pull that off. No, that's, <laughs> it. <laughs> that's it. I Did got they... my son Blake at Grimace. My daughter was yeah. ordering food, and my youngest Grant was the hamburger. My wife was was the server there. We had the old school outfit there. It was great. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty good. Um, I, I can't. You can't go wrong with that one, especially when you have a full McDonald's at your disposal to help you with it. <laughs> <laughs> they call me Richie Rich there with old McDonald's. <laughs> Dude, I mean, Thank Ronald you. McDonald's a little scary sometimes, too, though. Oh, my son didn't like it in the beginning. Was he scared? A little bit. <laughs> yeah. He, he's good now. Like, Ronald McDonald, like, the obviously, he's been around for decades, but if, if you created that now, I, that wouldn't pass nowadays. There's They'd be like, that's good one. for a scary yeah. movie. It looks like Chucky's uncle or something. Yeah. You know? So, who wore hey, it listen, best? Which let... one did you like best? Ooh, we can, can I see those again? Yeah, when was Ronald McDonald? Was that the? I mean, you're looking at pop culture with it with Kelsey and 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 Swift right now is is pretty. You know, you can't go wrong with that one. Oh, Adam man. Jones is Michael Jackson's pretty money. That's pretty. That's pretty good too. I'm not. I'm not mad at either one of those. Um, I would say if you're looking at with all the Swifties in the world, you know, everybody's going to take take Kelsey and Swift. That's a. That's probably the number one uh, on the on the Halloween list this year there you go what were you gonna say aj before he jumps i was gonna say you know why he's not gonna pick ronald mcdonald because lance only eats salads so i mean he's yeah, never been only to eats salads yeah just to make sure that certain people are happy in the broadcast booth yeah right <laughs> well and and all those all those like super super athletic radio hosts that are just watching you know your every move because you know they they know what they're talking about they're all nutritionists i think those radio hosts 
it's amazing what what kind of degrees people get just sitting uh, behind things and looking on social media. <laughs> it is right, <laughs> right, AJ. Listen, I only get smarter every day that I'm on social media and behind the broadcast booth. So I mean, listen, pretty soon, <laughs> that, pretty soon, that hasn't I mean, changed geesh. from your playing days, though. That has not changed from your playing days. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lance, we appreciate you, man. We'll talk to you later this off season. Enjoy some fam time, and uh, yeah, let's get at some point give give us another video of that, like maybe a, more of a tour of that. Um, what are you calling it? Because Todd Father's got what? What you call this? The lab? Yeah. Are you calling it yet. something? We we'll have to. We gotta. We gotta wait for it to be done, and then we can kind of, kind of go from there. I'm sure my my wife's pretty, uh, pretty witty at some stuff, so I'll see what she can throw around and and go from there. So, you know, maybe we'll throw some videos out there. Maybe we'll get High Noon to throw us a, a label on the back because that's what we were we were ripping. I was ripping a High Noon while I was while I was walking through there. So uh, we'll see what we got. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Man, we'll you changed. You went from. You used to drink Budweiser. Now you're drinking High Noons, man. People change when they get all, you know, hey, worried about their caloric intakes. Yeah, Budweiser's a little heavy. My body's my temple, you know. So I'm just trying to play for as long <laughs> as I can. That's right. That's the way to go. <laughs> the off season beverage of choice. Thanks, Lance. Good shit, man. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Thanks for having me, guys. <laughs> Cheers.